Fringe started about 20 years ago, the project, over 20 years actually. And uh, at the time I was with a small record, very small label, and we had decided to do a strings record together and um, go the conventional route with uh, a hired gun arranger and some conventional, uh, some standards and, you know, I guess conventional would be the right word for the arrangements too. And um, we started down that path and then unfortunately they canceled. And I was so disappointed about it, like most, most saxophone players, you know, um, the thought of playing with strings is very exciting because of Charlie Parker and other great records. Um, and it's kind of an exotic experience for us because, you know, we never get to do it and you hear it so much on classical music and there's such a lushness and expressiveness uh, to the section that it's something that's got a lot, of, it's a very alluring. So I decided that, you know, I had so much passion for this project that I was going to learn how to write for strings. So I had a background in arranging, of course, and I knew how to arrange, uh, but I had never even thought about arranging for strings. So I took really over a year, I guess I would say, um, starting to listen really specifically and closely to string arrangements, transcribing some arrangements, um, studying, getting books, things like that, um, meeting with um, arrangers, talking to arrangers about strings, and taking some lessons too. And uh, little by little, I kind of came to uh, the point where I felt confident to begin this arranging section of it. I had been writing some tunes with the project in mind, but uh, the arranging thing was the secondary part. And um, come September of 2001, we were ready to record the project. September 10th, 2001 was the rehearsal and I'll just never forget it because it's just right around the corner of the rehearsal space from uh, our apartment and um, it was raining like crazy September 10th. We got there, um, the strings were there, the, some of the best possible string players that you could get in the world for this kind of thing. They're on tons of records unbelievable sound and intonation and time, just perfect. And we started playing the music and we played, I remember we played the first um, movement to the suite, the uh, river suite. And when we got done with it, the concert master yelled, yeah. And I knew, I knew that it was good. I knew that it was good. The next day was supposed to be uh, the, the, not the rehearsal, the recording. The next day was supposed to be the recording. And uh, that was September 11, 2001. And so uh, the bass player and I, uh, we live in the same building in Manhattan. And um, we got up and we met at 8.30 exactly 8.30. And we live pretty close to uh, Port Authority bus station. So uh, we went over to Port Authority, walked downstairs to uh, get the train, met a TV in there, and we saw one of the, band the first building had been hit. It was on a TV and everybody was watching. And like everybody, I mean, it was uh, devastating, but like everybody, we thought it was an accident. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had no idea what was going to happen at that point with a record date, but if it was an accident, maybe we would be okay because we were going to Brooklyn. Systems 2, great, great studio in Brooklyn. And um, we got on the subway. That was at 42nd Street. 
and that particular subway goes underground uh, and then above ground in Brooklyn. And when we came above ground, it was right there on the edge of Brooklyn, clear view of the buildings, and both buildings were on fire. Both had been hit. And we're looking at each other, and then the next stop, we stopped and someone came, someone ran in and said, terrorist attack. Of course, then we knew and I knew that there was no way that we were gonna record. I regrouped, um, we, um, we decided that we were gonna do it at the end of October, in the beginning of November, there were two days. And um, the record date was different, for sure. There's no doubt that the record date was different. Um, I think two or three of the string players that were supposed to uh, be there couldn't make it because they were gone. And um, so we got a couple different string players. Uh, I did work over some of the arrangements. I made some tweaks to them. Uh, you know, I was able to practice a little bit more. Um, we didn't rehearse before the recording. And then we did the date. And I'm so proud of it because um, I think most of us hadn't played too much after the, the attacks. And if at all, I hadn't. I hadn't done any gigs, I don't think. The group was so inspired. I, I mean it with all my heart that everybody played their heart out. It was really intense for all of us. And um, you can hear it in the music. You can really hear the passion, the precision, the musicality, just the power of great musicianship going into that music. Six originals and uh, two standards. It's, in the end, it's the record that I'm most proud of. Um, it, it, I put everything I had into it. I spent the longest time on it. I had to overcome some serious setbacks, um, but we got it done. And I'm very proud of that. And um, eventually it came out on Milestone Records, which is one of the greatest jazz records of all time. Um, many remarkable reviews. Um, I was able to perform it uh, several times. And um, uh, now it's coming out on my current record label. I'm so pleased on Savant Records. And uh, it'll be out on September 24th. And I really hope that you'll check it out.